GKFX Prime presents the week ahead. Hi everyone. This week I'm previewing my top five things to look out for this week, which are China second quarter GDP, interest rate decisions from the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan and the Bank of Canada, as well as a face-to-face -face summit of EU leaders to examine the EU recovery fund. Since the EU recovery fund is a hot topic this week, I have a little question. What is the most populated city in the European Union? Is it Paris, London, Berlin or Rome? It's Berlin. Don't forget about Brexit guys. London is no longer in the EU so Berlin tops the list with 3.7 million people. If you like that please click the like button as it really helps us spread the word about these videos. So here you can see what I think are the main events and data points on the economic calendar. Specifically on my top five, unlike most of the world, China's economy is thought to have grown in quarter two, but it's still down on last year by minus 6.5%. All the central banks deciding rates this week are expected to hold them steady, but changes in other policy areas are more likely. It's also worth noting we have CPI stats for June out of Germany, the UK and the US this week. The outsized growth relative to its size in recent years makes China GDP important for all macro markets. But I'd put extra emphasis on the Aussie dollar and of course China and Hong Kong shares, which have seen massive gains in the last week. There's a big range of estimates from minus 5% to plus 3% for quarter on quarter growth, so it's all to play for. I'd say any positive number is good for stock markets and the Aussie dollar. Last time around, the Bank of Japan extended its corporate support measures to 110 trillion yen from 75 trillion before. It just downgraded its economic forecast for all Japanese regions last week, so another expansion seems possible. I think any growth boosting measures could be viewed as positive for the yen. The ECB president, Christine Lagarde, told the Financial Times last week that she wants to explore every available avenue to combat climate change. To me, this would mean buying the bond of or extending even cheaper loans directly to so-called green businesses. She also said the ECB has time to assess the effectiveness of stimulus so far, so that probably means no policy change this time around. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau got ridiculed last week for saying we decided to take on that debt to prevent Canadians from having to do it. Of course, we understand his point, but a bigger national debt will need paying off eventually by tax collected on the hard work of Canadians. But before then, the Bank of Canada is there to keep interest rates at rock bottom to allow all the extra government borrowing. Based on the confidence shown by Germany's Angela Merkel, it feels to me like the EU recovery fund could actually be agreed at this summit. But you never know with politics. The European Commission has suggested a 750 billion euro fund with 500 billion in grants to the countries most in need. To please the frugal four countries, it might end up being a smaller fund with a lower proportion of grants or just a lot of strings to get attached to the grants, but either way, any agreement should be good news for the euro and stock indices like the DAX and the euro stocks. Right, thanks everyone. Good luck trading and make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video.